uh, requests that I get when people are looking at first wanting to customize Odoo, and that's how do you modify workflows and how can you change a workflow to better meet the demands of a particular uh, industry or, or business requirement. And um, so here we're going to really jump right into it. Um, we're going to start, and I've uh, went ahead and installed the MRP module. So this is just a basic Odoo database with the MRP module installed. And if we go here to our uh, manufacturing environment, the reason I picked manufacturing is it has a rather simple workflow to work with. And so when we're modifying workflows and you're learning about them, you're going to want to, you know, start uh, small, you know, with, with uh, you know, a, a, an easier workflow to modify. So um, we're going to go into our developer mode. And this is uh, a really handy feature. Um, we're, we're, uh, you know, seeing more and more that, uh, you know, running this in the cloud, that there's more capabilities you can do with installing stuff and creating actions and, and signals and these things within uh, an Odoo database. So it gives you more freedom and flexibility. Um, plus, it allows you to prototype a little faster. So let's look at just a, a standard manufacturing order. Um, if you're not real familiar with the manufacturing environment, that's okay. Um, uh, prerequisites for this video might include, first of all, there's another workflow video that shows how workflows uh, are generally put together and how they operate. So that's going to be a pre prerequisite because this is customizing workflows. This is changing them. Um, and also, it would know, be helpful if you, if you kind of had a basic understanding of the manufacturing module. But um, th that's probably not so important. This is going to apply pretty much to any module. Um, and uh, you'll see why. So we're just going to create a, a simple product here, just a widget. And uh, a widget for our bill of material. And now this one will pop a screen. Um, but we can just pick that it, we're doing this for the widget product. And so now we basically just have a very basic manufacturing order. We haven't really created anything. You know, that's outside the scope of this video of, of setting up bill materials. But what we want to do is we want to change the workflow. So let's look at how the workflow works now. Once I have created a manufacturing order and I say that I want to create this product in this certain quantity on this date, and I could have products that get consumed and so forth. Um, I'm going to hit save and you'll notice that we can either confirm or cancel the production and once I hit confirm we're going to have a, a check availability uh, state here where we're looking for our raw materials and if I click this we'll immediately because there's no materials uh, that we really need they're going to be available no matter what because this is an empty order, um, we're ready to produce. So I can click produce and it's going to ask me how many I want to produce and I hit con confirm and our project state now moves to done. So we, we've just walked through the basic workflow of the manufacturing order from a user perspective. So now let's take a look at the workflow as it looks from a more of a, a developer perspective. So I, if I hit edit workflow and go over here to this diagram view over here, you'll notice that we have these nodes that basically are what control the flow of those actions and states within our form. So again, if this is new, if this is unfamiliar, Look at the bottom of the page, you know, where you've down where you're viewing this video or downloaded it from, and there'll be a link at the bottom that's going to show you uh, a, a basic workflow walkthrough, so you'll understand, you know, how how these workflows work. Because now we're going to jump right into to modify them. So this is more of an advanced video. And so, for our example, we're going to take what is a, probably a very common workflow change. Is that there's going to be some process within an organization or business in which it's not just following the typical, okay, it was confirmed, now it's ready, and now it's in production. Maybe there's um, somebody that has to take an extra uh, step or an extra process that has to be done. Maybe it's something in quality assurance, and maybe it's something that is order dependent. In other words, if a certain capacity gets over a certain amount, 
then you have to use a different workflow. Now, one thing I'll caution before you jump right in and start changing workflows is there's a lot of power in routing and in the manufacturing system already. For the most part, um, you shouldn't have to change and, mod and customize workflows uh, until you've exhausted all your options in you know understanding the manufacturing systems, understanding work centers and routing and, and bill and material management. All those things, it's really important that you understand those basics before you get in and start changing uh, workflows because a lot of things can be handled through proper routing. And even in this example, there might be better ways to handle it, but I'm going to use an example of what what is typically a common workflow change, and that's it. There's a there's a requirement that another process has to take place in this in this chain, and that it is core enough to the business that you actually want to modify the workflow of the way this document moves through your company. Now, maybe perhaps if it, you're on a sales side, I'm going to throw out some examples. Maybe if an order is over five thousand dollars, that people in a certain group can't go ahead and confirm that sales order it has to go to a, a somebody to authorize it and you could say the same thing on a purchasing side perhaps a purchasing agent that's in the in a certain purchasing group would only have the ability to approve purchase orders up to perhaps say ten thousand dollars and then if it's over that amount they can still place the order but then the workflow is going to have it go to a state where where it can wait um, until that's approved. Now, I'm not going to pull up the purchase order workflow, but if you go in, um, like I have yeah, here for manufacturing, and you look at the purchasing workflow, you'll see it is extremely, extremely complicated. So we're not going to look at that one to modify. We're going to look at this one, but we're going to use a simple example, kind of like what I described. Um, and, and in this example, um, it's a common one that comes up in manufacturing, is that there needs to be some kind of uh, human interaction sometimes when orders meet certain requirements. Perhaps it's complexity of the order, perhaps it's certain um, you know purchasing or procurement requirements that are kind of outside the scope of what you would normally have. But I'm going to give you an example of how to change workflow and I want to just kind of give you some of those ideas of why you might change workflow and then we'll look at this example. So for this example, what I'm going to do is we're going to change workflow for manufacturing, uh, assuming that we have a manufacturing order that requires so, some sort of, of approval before production can take place. And I'm going to, uh, for the purposes of this demonstration, uh, assume that this is an order, if it, re if it re reaches a certain complexity, that you have to have an engineering approval for that uh, production to continue. And so in other words, you'll, you'll, you'll not be able to get into this ready state. We're going to wait to get into this ready state until after engineering has approved the, um, the document, you know, and, and has approved the order. But we only want that if it's a, a manufacturing order that requires engineering approval. Not all of them do. Let's say maybe only 10% do. Well, you don't want every one of them going through there, so you want to modify the workflow that depending upon a certain variable or a certain value in the model, we are going to reassign that uh, workflow to go and instead uh, require that approval. Otherwise, it won't. So with that explained of basically what we're trying to achieve, what we're going to do is we're going to basically, for simplicity state, just make a Boolean value that says, does this manufacturing order need uh, to be approved or not by the engineering department? So um, I'm going to go to manufacturing orders and click on this. And we're going to just use what is our standard uh, methods for adding fields to forms. And, and there are other videos. Um, that are linked at the bottom of this page as prerequisites uh, as this is a bit more of an advanced topic I'm gonna go a little fast but under here under our debug view we can go manage views and we want to edit this form 
and here under our origin which is our source document we're going to add a field and we're going to make a new field so this is going to add a field to our model and we're just going to call it approve approval we'll call it approval x approval and then we'll say engineering approval required well, so we're just spelling it out there so you'll see real easily what it is and we'll make it a type boolean value and you'll see that it's going to add it to our manufacturing model we'll hit save and so we've just added just this this x approval uh, variable here and we'll just for right now make it available to everybody and just like that we're going to at least have it on our form and it should show up right here under source documents once the form refreshes. So we can basically, when we create a manufacturing order now, we can, at the time we create it, say this this is uh, going to require engineering approval before this order can be processed. Now, obviously, everybody's environment is going to be different. You can have a lot more complex, uh, you know, fields and requirements and build upon this example. Um, what we're going to do now is we need to use this to tell our workflow uh, what we want to accomplish. So if I go here to edit workflow, we're going to start building this up. And we want to again go to our diagram view, make it a little easier to see. And so what we want to do is we want to, before this, uh, you know, we want them to go ahead and confirm everything but before we hit this ready we don't want to just go on true anymore and so if we look at this and again I'll remind you there is a video that kind of goes through how these things work right now no matter what it just uh, is a condition that's true meaning that it just goes as soon as it's from here to here there's no condition so what we're going to do is we're going to actually put a condition on this now and we'll say x approval because that's the variable we used our boolean variable so now this is basically means it's true and actually I've been preferring to do that just to, to spell it out like that so no longer will you go to the ready state oh and actually I want it the opposite we want it if the approval is false. Okay, so caught myself there. In other words, if, if we don't require approval, um, if it's not true, or we could say if approval equals false, then we just want to go right to the ready state because we don't need approval for for this particular document because the approval state or the approval boolean field is false so we're just setting up our conditions there uh, visually so now we're going to add a new node and we're going to name this uh, engineering approval and um, I'm going to go ahead and save it we don't have to manually set up the transitions we can do this through the interface And uh, so we got this node that we can move around and get it up here. And what we want to do is after we've confirmed, we're going to come out of this to our engineering approval node. And it's going to go ahead and prompt us to, uh, to set up this transition. And as you might expect, we're going to have X approval, in this case, equals true. Okay, so we're, we've made it simple because you're going to probably have a lot more complex uh, logic than this, but, you, but you're going to want to build on this idea because it's just a matter of understanding um, how, how, to, uh, how this fits together. But if, we're if, if, X, if we have to approve the document, we're going to come this way. Otherwise, we're going to go right to the ready state. So once we do have approval, then we're going to go to the ready state. 
and notice that when we come back up here again um, it's prompting us for this transition now this transition isn't going to be based upon um, the condition of whether it's approved or not by the checkbox or whether it requires approval we want a signal that says it's been approved and typically nine times out of ten when you're working with Odoo that signal is in the way of a button so workflows um, can be boiled down a lot of times to under these conditions show these particular options and then change the state or change uh, where the flow goes based upon on, on those decisions that's what you're seeing here so we want a uh, signal here and so I'm gonna call it button approval so we're gonna we're gonna stay with that name and uh, but we put button in front and, th and that's a lot of times how they'll do that so we'll hit save here and now we've we've pretty much set up the workflow part of this so what's what's happening and what you're seeing here is we're we're confirming just like usual but once we've confirmed and this is true we're get we in your and approvals required we're going this way if approvals not required then we go this way okay now there's one more um, condition that we need to we do need to account for and um, that's the fact that um, let me get this in the view is that you, we have a cancel here and you'll notice that all, a lot of roads lead to cancel and when, while we're in this engineering approval state we still want to be able to cancel this order we don't want to get stuck in a state where we'd have to move it to ready to cancel it so we're going to go ahead and set this up while we're here and it's just as simple as input and button cancel here and so this signal this this button we know is going to be available to us and now when that signal gets picked up it can now immediately um, go to the cancel so once we've confirmed we're going to be in this engineering approval state and we can either approve it you know and move it along its way or we can cancel it so that's the our kind of our binary uh, decisions now what we don't have